Welcome to the AME Food Testing Show. Today's topic, carcinogen found in Pepsi and Coke products with Charles Margulis. Charles is the communication director at the Center for Environmental Health. Prior to joining CEH, Charles was the lead campaigner for Greenpeace USA's genetic engineering campaign for five years. He's a graduate of the University of California at Berkeley in Peace and Conflict Studies. He's also a graduate of the California Culinary Academy and was a longtime professional baker. Now, welcome with me, Charles Margulis. Charles? Hi, thanks for having me. Charles, welcome to the show. Today's topic is particularly interesting to anyone that's currently a consumer of Pepsi and Coke products. Let me ask you, are there any carcinogenic ingredients in cola drinks? Well, there there is at least one, uh, and especially in Pepsi drinks. Uh, that's what our testing found. Uh, to take a step back, uh, this all came about because California has one of the strongest consumer protection laws in the country. Uh, it's a law known as Prop 65 uh, because it was a voter proposition that was adopted in 1986. And what Prop 65 does is say that whenever a consumer uh, may be exposed to a chemical that can cause cancer or a chemical that can cause serious reproductive health problems, uh, consumers have to be warned, uh, letting uh, people know that uh, that's, that's what they may be exposed to from that product. Since there's new science all the time about chemicals uh, that are in commerce, uh, California sometimes adds chemicals to that list. So in 2011, uh, California was looking at a chemical uh, called 4-methylimidazole. Uh, it's usually uh, referred to as 4-MEI. Uh, and 4-MEI, uh, studied by the National Toxicology Program, showed the, uh, that uh, the chemical caused cancer uh, in laboratory animals. So what California scientists did was uh, proposed uh, regulating uh, 4-MEI under the state's Prop 65 law, and that meant that products that uh, contained high enough levels of that chemical uh, would have to carry a warning label. Well, the problem for uh, companies like Coke and Pepsi is that uh, caramel coloring, which is a main ingredient in colas, uh, contains 4-MEI as a byproduct of the way that uh, industrial caramel coloring is produced. And so the companies had a dilemma. Uh, they knew that under the California law, their uh, colas would have high enough levels that they would have to put a warning label. Uh, they probably figured that uh, most of their consumers probably wouldn't want to drink something that said, warning, this product uh, may contains a chemical that may cause cancer. Uh, and so they went to their caramel coloring suppliers and said, look, we got to get ahead of this. Uh, we have one year to get in compliance with this California regulation. Uh, we don't want to put a label on our products, so we need you to make caramel coloring in a new way that doesn't produce this uh, chemical as a side effect. And uh, about a year later, when the law uh, became effective in 2012, uh, in March of that year, both Coke and Pepsi told reporters, uh, we are uh, changing our caramel coloring to uh, be in compliance with this California law. We're going to make the new sodas, uh, new colas available in California first, and shortly thereafter we'll make them available in the rest of the country. Uh, since that was March 2012, uh, more than a year ago, we decided it was time to check on Coke and Pepsi and see how they were doing. So we did some product testing. We bought Coke and Pepsi here in California and we tested it to see uh, uh, what the levels of 4-MEI were. And uh, the products that we bought in California were fine. They were below the, the, the state limit. Then we decided to see uh, if the companies had followed up uh, as they promised to do for the rest of the country. So we had supporters of our organization in 10 different states outside of California uh, mail us cans of Coke and Pepsi. Uh, uh, we had, uh, at the end of that process, uh, 20 well-traveled sodas in our office. And uh, we sent those uh, uh, cans of soda to an independent laboratory, uh, the same laboratory that did the uh, original testing. Uh, and they found uh, that nine out of the ten Coke products were fine. They were uh, well below California standards. Most of them were undetectable for 4-MEI. They had no 4-MEI at all. Uh, but ten out of ten of the Pepsi products still had high levels. In fact, uh, every single one uh, far exceeded the safety levels uh, uh, that California established. Uh, so we were actually pretty shocked uh, that Pepsi was not only so far behind Coke on this, but a after almost a year and a half, uh, was still selling uh, the this uh, cancer-causing uh, the soda with a cancer-causing ingredient 
uh, everywhere uh, except California. Well, Charles, that's a fascinating study, and the data that you collected and validated also follows standard protocols for a food study. Is that correct? Right. I mean, the, so we've been doing this kind of uh, uh, product mm -hmm. testing for uh, 16 years. Um, our our work uh, doing product testing uh, has led to national legislation. Uh, it's led to entire industries changing the way they make their products. Uh, it's led to major retailers like Walmart and Target to uh, do major nas nationwide product recalls. Uh, you know, we we always use independent laboratories. Uh, the independent laboratories typically use uh, uh, standard scientific protocols. Uh, these are the same kinds of laboratories that uh, major food companies use. Uh, even government agencies often use these laboratories. Um, so yeah, the the process is, is pretty standard. Well, Charles, as we look at the Center for Environmental Health and their campaign regarding for MEI, do you feel that the Center for Environmental Health is a watchdog group that's primarily interested in protecting consumers or protecting companies or watchdogging whether or not companies are doing their due diligence? Well, Center for Environmental Health is a, is a nonprofit public interest watchdog. We're, we're a consumer watchdog uh, looking out primarily for children's and families' health. Uh, so, you know, our work over 16 years has been in the, in the public interest uh, in terms of uh, looking at uh, harmful chemical exposures in everyday products, not just colas, but uh, you know, we're very well known, for example, for finding uh, high levels of lead uh, that could uh, trigger lead poisoning exposures to children uh, in everything from uh, vinyl kids' lunch boxes to children's jewelry uh, to dozens of other children's products. Uh, and our work on exposing lead threats to kids uh, led to a national law uh, that for the first time banned uh, lead in all children's products. Uh, and that happened in 2008. Um, you know, so our work uh, over 16 years has, has been uh, in the public interest, uh, and that's how we looked at the, the um, project with Coke and Pepsi. Uh, we believe that uh, if companies can eliminate cancer-causing ingredients from their products, they should. Uh, it's much better uh, for the public uh, to eliminate the ingredient rather than to simply stick a warning label on it. Uh, obviously, a lot of people know uh, that colas are not good for them uh, and drink them anyway. Um, we don't think a cancer warning is necessarily going to scare everybody off. Obviously, it'll scare some people off. Uh, hopefully, it would scare a lot of people. But to see that result, I mean, we, we fully expected that uh, both companies would uh, have taken the same action and, and worked as swiftly as possible uh, to get safer sodas out to all their consumers. Uh, Pepsi, uh, since our results have come out, has stated that uh, they are in the process of uh, switching out uh, to their new caramel coloring and they'll have that process completed uh, by the end of next February. But they still haven't explained why they're so far behind on uh, Coke on this. Uh, I mean, the caramel coloring market isn't uh, a tremendously huge uh, uh, a marketplace. There are only a couple of major suppliers. Uh, if Coke's supplier was able to uh, assign a process and put it in place quickly enough, we don't understand what's taking Pepsi so long. Well, certainly your advocacy group stands for consumer safety. Can you let us know about any of your other future projects or any other food-related type issues that you're currently working on or that you will work on? And again, our audience is primarily food producers, which are food production managers, food quality managers, food safety managers, and food security managers. Yeah, well, we recently uh, filed uh, lawsuits around uh, levels of lead that we found in honey. Uh, there were a few honey brands uh, that we've now settled with, who've agreed to uh, significantly reduce the levels of lead in their honey. Uh, I believe we're still working on a case uh, with a supplier to Kroger uh, to have them uh, come to the same strict agreement. Uh, there have been uh, reports over the years of high levels of lead in honey, uh, primarily due to uh, overseas uh, 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 importers, uh, or I should say exporters to the U.S., uh, of honey that's stored sometimes in lead-lined uh, uh, steel um, uh, drums, and some of that lead can leach into the honey uh, and cause a, a, a lead exposure problem. So we've been working with the suppliers uh, so uh, they can uh, require, if they are uh, bringing in a, a honey from overseas, uh, they, they can require their uh, suppliers from overseas to use 
uh, basically they're going to be using non-metallic uh, drums for their storage, uh, so there's no more lead exposure problems. Uh, we've also been looking recently at uh, lead in some uh, ginger, uh, uh, ginger-based products, uh, candy ginger and uh, 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 ginger snacks, uh, which are often uh, used by pregnant women uh, for nausea. Uh, obviously, that's a big lead concern uh, if there are high levels of lead. Um, so those are some cases that we're also still working on. Well, Charles, it sounds like you're doing a lot of good work to protect the consumers. If you were to find any food producer, would you first give them advance notice before you began a campaign? It depends on the situation. Uh, there were cases uh, several years ago uh, where uh, far salmon uh, were found with high levels of PCBs. Um, uh, this PCBs are a, a chemical that's long been known to cause cancer uh, and that are fairly ubiquitous in the environment. Uh, because salmon uh, have a diet of uh, other fish, uh, PCBs that build up uh, in, in the food chain uh, in fish, uh, when, when salmon consume those fish, uh, they are also consuming high levels of PCBs, uh, and that ends up in their uh, tissues and the tissues that we, we eat. Um, so that, that was a, a concern uh, 10 years ago now. Um, the first step in any uh, lawsuit is a, a legal notice that we send to the companies uh, to let them know that we've discovered the problem uh, and that they need to take action uh, to resolve it. In those cases, uh, we talk with every major supplier of farm salmon uh, in the U.S., uh, and they all assured us that they were in the process of changing their uh, practices uh, to introduce more uh, vegetable-based matter into the farm salmon's diet, uh, and that would significantly reduce the PCB levels. So in those cases, we didn't need to bring a lawsuit. We didn't, we didn't pursue any legal action. Once the companies uh, showed us their records and showed us that they were uh, taking steps and showed us their testing that showed that PCB levels were significantly reduced, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't need to bring a lawsuit. So, uh, yeah, there are, there are definitely cases uh, where companies can, take, can be proactive uh, and avoid legal action. Excellent. Charles, would you like to summarize our discussion about the potential carcinogenic compounds like 4-NEI found in Coke and your efforts and your future goals of the organization? Uh, well, my brief summary is, you know, we, we did our, we released our, our test results on uh, the Coke and Pepsi products just before the 4th of July holiday, and, and as I said, we were very surprised when Pepsi said it will be uh, sometime next February when their products are, are finally cleaned up nationwide. Uh, so my response to that was, you know, my, my kids don't drink uh, uh, soda on a regular basis, um, but, you know, if we go to a picnic and uh, somebody brings uh, a soda, my kids will bother me and say they really want one. So I'll let them have, have, have a soda. Uh, but I wouldn't let them have a Pepsi at this point. Uh, and apparently uh, they're not going to be drinking a Pepsi until after next Valentine's Day. Well, thank you so much, Charles, for your time today and your contribution to the AMA Food Testing Show and allow you now to have any final comments prior to closure. I think that'll do it. Thanks very much for having me on. Thank you very much, Charles. If you have any other issues that are of concern to food producers, feel free to join us on the show. I will do. Thank you very much. All right. Take All care. Right.